last day here at camp. Um, excited to get home to the family, but you know, kind of sad too. It's been a really good weekend, and uh, yeah, but you know, yeah, ready to get home. Okay, so here's the thing. So I want you guys, on the count of four, <laughs> to scream your favorite thing here at camp, all right? Like one, two, three, and then we scream. No, one, one two, two, three, four, and then yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Well done, thank you. All right, we're here. We're, we're on our way. Hey. Everybody, say hi. hi. What's up, camera? Hi. How you doing back there, Anderson? Hi. <laughs> you got your name right. Yes. Whoa. I did. Whoa. <laughs> Here at the rest stop, and um, just taking a little break before we hit the road and uh, make it home. Hi. Hi. All right. What? Um, what was your favoritist thing? Is that a word? No. Favoritist? Sure. Most favorite? You know what? We'll make it a word. It's just favorite. Se yeah. Teenage <laughs> dictionary. Just favorite. Wow. Uh, yes. What was your favorite thing this weekend? Probably just hanging out with everyone. Just hanging out there. That was, yeah, that was good. What was your favorite thing? Probably the gym. <laughs> the gym. Yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Hanging out with everyone like Jonathan. The gym was awesome. It was. <laughs> All right. Mercy, what was um what was your favorite thing? Most favorite your most fa your favorite thing this weekend? Uh uh stuff. I don't know. Okay. Dude, why did he do that? That was perfect. What? We're back, and uh, I'm gonna go home now. I haven't been down here in a while. The the kiddos are in bed. Um, I'm really tired, but I I realized that uh, we didn't talk about our passage yet today. So here we go. Today is day 318, and we are starting in Acts chapter 18, verse 19, going through the entire chapter as well as chapter 19. The rest of chapter 18 details a lot of traveling that Paul is doing as well as some companions that he has while he's traveling. Acts chapter 19 is one of the most interesting chapters, not just in the book of Acts, but in the New Testament. And you really see like all these crazy things are happening 
as Paul is there ministering, uh, he has a lot of these supernatural abilities that are given to him by the Holy Spirit that he's healing people so much so that even the handkerchief that he has, if people touch that, they're getting healed. And one of the miraculous things that were ha that was happening is people were who were demon possessed, uh, that these demons were being cast out. And so there were these seven sons of Sceva who were itinerant Jewish exorcists, which is kind of a weird profession to have. But they decide to, via the same power and means that Paul uses to cast out a demon. So they say to a demon-possessed guy, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, we tell you to come out. And the demon responds to these guys and essentially says, like, we know Jesus and we've heard of Paul, but who are you? And, and then proceeds to beat these guys up and they leave this fight, which really was more of a beating than it was a fight, uh, bloodied and naked. And it, and the crazy thing with this story, because um, my initial thought was it, with it was that it could actually hinder or deter the ministry because you have these guys using the name of Jesus, using Paul's name, and in spite of them using them, this demon, you know, overtakes them. But actually the, the response from the people at Ephesus was fear. And because of the fact that this happened, the name of Jesus was extolled and they feared God. They feared Jesus and therefore their lives reflected that. They repented. They got rid of all their books of sorcery. Anything that was contrary to God, they were burning it up. And there was a massive revival that was happening in the city of Ephesus, which was a major city back then. This wasn't just like a little town uh, or a medium site. This was a major city in the ancient world. I couldn't help but be blown away by the reality of God's power um, that supersedes like human understanding and human ability. Like what happens in this city is just incredible. Like the gospel being preached literally changes the economic framework of this major city. We know that by the later half of chapter 19 because of Demetrius and the trade that was um, very lucrative for him and other tradesmen in, in erecting these idols of Artemis because, you know, in Ephesus, that is actually one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the temple that was built to Artemis. And the gospel comes through Paul, through the Holy Spirit, and the economic culture, the economic makeup of that city is completely changed. And I think we have to trust and believe that God can do anything he wants. Like this story is a testimony that God can do anything he wants and he will do anything he wants to have his truth and have the gospel made a big deal of. And there's not going to be um, any type of worldly idea, any other type of worldview or uh, theology that takes God out of the picture that is going to be more powerful than God, but God will have his way. And I think our story today and what we read today is evidence of that. And God will be extolled. He will be glorified no matter what. It's just a matter of will we be in agreement with him, him being glorified? Or will we be people that are dumbfounded because we try to do something to not glorify God, but in the process he actually was glorified? And so it's just a really cool story, an encouraging story. And it reminds us that it is all about extolling and making a big deal of God.